A submarine captain named Robinson was suddenly dismissed from his job after 11 years of working at a company called Agora. Agora was a company that searched for sunken ships at the bottom of the ocean. Before working at Agora, Robinson was a loyal Navy who loved his job, but his love made him forget about his family, so his wife asked for a divorce and made him separate from his son, Martin. Robinson was very disappointed with that decision, especially after devoting his entire life to the company. Apart from that, his performance had never disappointed him. Robinson only got £8,600 as severance pay, and since he didn't have a working contract, he couldn't demand anything more. After Robinson left the company, he met two other workers who were fired from Agora, namely Kirsten and Blackie, at a cafe. They expressed their disappointment with the company, which had fired them without a clear reason, and because of that, Kirsten had to take an antidepressant as he was stressed thinking about how to support his family, especially since he also had a lot of debts to pay, while Robinson was increasingly embarrassed to meet his son, who at that time had lived with his very rich stepfather. That was when Kirsten told him about one of his expeditions with Agora before he was fired. He once went to the Black Sea to search for a submarine left by the Nazis, which was rumored to contain gold nuggets worth millions of dollars. The ship was found, but the company had not touched the submarine at all and it was still at the bottom of the sea. All of this was because there was a conflict between Russia and Georgia. The Black Sea is the border between these two countries, and if Agora decided to go there, their company would be considered interfering in the political affairs of the two countries, and they of course didn't want that to happen. Disappointed with the company that sacked them, they decided to take the treasure using a submarine and Robinson would be the leader. To carry out the expedition, they needed a lot of funding, so Kirsten asked Robinson and Blackie to meet an investor named Lewis. They were both greeted by his secretary named Daniels, who immediately welcomed and helped them explain their purpose of coming there. Back in 1941, the Nazis experienced a crisis and asked Russia for a loan. At that time, Russia was still a neutral country and agreed to the request in the hope that Nazis would not disturb their country. The loan in the form of gold was sent by submarine, but the submarine never reached Germany, so Hitler continued occupying Russia for four years. After many years, rumors circulated about the submarine, and the one who managed to find it was Agora, but a month after Agora discovered the submarine, a conflict broke out between Russia and Georgia, so Agora chose to leave the discovery to avoid the ongoing conflict. Robinson intended to take the treasure using a submarine, and he needed an investment from Lewis of $180,000. Lewis immediately agreed and asked for a 40% share. He also sent Daniels as his representative during the expedition. After the agreement was agreed, Blackie and Robinson began recruiting people to join and Robinson wanted half of his team to be Russian because they would enter Russian waters. The first two people selected were Reynolds and Peters who had experiences in the Navy. He then recruited Levchenko for the kitchen section, Zaitsev for the engine section, and Baba for the sonar section. A person named Morozov was chosen to read the diagrams and Robinson also chose two reliable divers named Fraser and Gittens, who would later be tasked with retrieving the gold from the German submarine. On the day of their departure, a teenager named Tobin showed up and claimed as Kirsten's friend. He reported that Kirsten had committed suicide to get insurance money for his wife, and he was given a will to go to Robinson and apologize because Kirsten couldn't take part in the expedition. Tobin looked so desperate that Robinson asked him to join his crew who was ready to go. Tobin agreed to the invitation and left with Robinson's team for Sevastopol, their departure point where their submarine was located. The submarine they bought looked old and rusty, but Robinson remained optimistic. He immediately directed his crew to be ready in each post to check the submarine. Several problems were found. The ship's battery could only be charged up to 70%. Apart from that, the fuel tank was leaking so fuel spill on the main turbine. The most terrible thing was that there was no safety suit and there was only one radio for communication. Robinson himself didn't mind the problems as long as the submarine was still able to dive well. He also explained that they would not use the radio because it could be heard by the Russian ships patrolling above them later. After all the checks were complete, Robinson immediately explained the purpose of their expedition. They would head to the Black Sea to look for a German submarine carrying hundreds of kilos of gold. Everyone would get an equal share after 40% was given to the main investor, Lewis. Turned out that several members weren't happy with the equal distribution of profits, Daniels was one of them who protested because he was worried that the crew would get rid of each other to get more shares. Robinson didn't respond and instead chose to leave while giving orders to the crew to start the submarine. Apart from Daniels, Fraser also didn't like Robinson's decision. He incited his British friends by saying that the British were more entitled to get more shares than the Russians whose work was not harder than theirs. He even openly showed his displeasure by throwing away the food Levchenko cooked for them. From the Russians themselves, Zaitsev refused to be helped by Tobin, because he considered Tobin nothing more than a crew without any expertise. Even so, Tobin responded patiently and he just obeyed what he was ordered. 
The next day, at the control center, Robinson greeted Tobin who had been going on all day looking at the photo on his cell phone. It turned out that Tobin was looking at a photo of his girlfriend's ultrasound and Robinson said that he would become a rich man and be able to make his children happy. Suddenly the light turned red, indicating that there was a problem. All the crew immediately stopped their activities, including Fraser, who immediately prepared to turn off the engine. Baba and the sonar section reported that there was a Russian warship getting closer. Fortunately, they were not aware of their presence but even so, Robinson ordered Blackie to temporarily run the ship as slow as possible. After traveling for days, they finally arrived at the Black Sea where the German ship was found. Morgazov reported this to Robinson. Then Robinson went to the engine room to check the leak which was being repaired by Zaitsev and the other crew. Blackie, who happened to be there, reported that the location of the leak had been found but before they could fix it, they had to remove the fuel first. Robinson asked that the repairs be completed immediately because after that, the ship had to fill the batteries and make a deeper dive. Before leaving, Blackie said that several British crews did not agree with the division of profits and they were not getting along with the Russian crews. Robinson didn't believe it at first, but shortly after, he heard a commotion in the kitchen and saw that the Russian and British crews were arguing over lottery cards. Robinson was furious, especially after one of them used the radio to listen to the lottery announcements, and this was very risky because the Russian ship might find out. Robinson immediately destroyed the only radio on the submarine and emphasized once again that everyone got an equal share. He even didn't hesitate to throw anyone who refused his decision or endangered the ship out of there. Soon problems came from the engine room after Taba made a mistake when helping Zaitsev. Fraser who happened to be passing by misunderstood and thought that Blackie was going to beat Tobin. He took out a knife while Blackie explained that he was only doing a lesson so that Tobin would be more careful when working but Fraser, who was still angry at Robinson's decision, stabbed Blackie with his knife. Blackie collapsed and his hand bumped the gasoline and sparked a fire in the engine room. A small explosion happened and Robinson was thrown to the wall and fainted. Robinson fainted for 18 hours, and when he woke up, his crew had split into two. The Russians took control of the other side of the ship and took the entire supply of drinking water with them. Reynolds reported that the submarine was badly damaged, especially the ship's steering shaft, which could only survive for 36 hours before all the engines died completely. Not wanting to die, Robinson met the Russians to invite them to make peace. He explained that the German submarine they were looking for was the same model as the one they were currently on so they could take the necessary spare parts from that ship. The first thing they had to do was to find the exact position of the German submarine. After that, the divers would reach the submarine and take the spare parts needed. But because the sonar was damaged after the last incident, Baba had to detect the position of the German submarine using his hearing. Fraser and Zaitsev were in charge of controlling the submarine while Baba would use vibrations to detect objects around the ship. Fortunately, Baba managed to find something 100 meters away from them, but even though the distance was quite close, it couldn't be ascertained whether it was the submarine they were looking for or just sand dunes. To check it, Fraser and Peter needed another person to dive with them, so Tobin volunteered, feeling he would be able to handle it with his experience at a scuba diving club back when he was still at school. The three of them got out of the submarine and dived into the dark black sea. As a beginner, Tobin was nervous and scared, but luckily, Fraser was able to calm him down. After following Robinson's instructions, Fraser and the others managed to reach the coordinate, but Fraser was disappointed seeing it was nothing but sand dunes, the destination, but at first Fraser was disappointed because he thought it was a sand dune. Luckily, Tobin saw something below the sand, which turned out to be the submarine buried under the sand. They found lots of skulls inside it. After reaching the engine room, they found the exact same steering shaft as the one in their submarine, so they immediately took it. Meanwhile, Fraser checked the condition of the submarine, and that was when he found the gold they were looking for. He carried the gold along with the steering shaft without asking permission from Robinson first. Even so, Robinson realized that they were pulling gold because the load they were pulling was too heavy for just the steering shaft. Daniels doubted the submarine would be able to pull the load and asked Robinson to drop some of the gold, but Robinson was optimistic that all the gold and the steering shaft could be transported simultaneously. That eventually harmed Peter, who ended up falling into the trench after trying to save some gold bars that were falling. After the gold was successfully brought, the crew debated how they could bring the gold to the surface. Daniels wanted them to go to the surface because the condition was too risky to return to Sevastopol, while the others did not agree because if they showed up on the surface, they would definitely be caught by a Russian patrol ship. Almost all of them were ready to take a big risk by trying to start the submarine again and get away from the Russian sea. Feeling he had lost his voice, Daniels invited Robinson to talk privately. Daniels revealed that all this time the one who had been funding Robinson was Agora. They had planned everything, 
including the ambush they would do after Robinson and his crew resurfaced. Robinson didn't immediately believe it, but Daniels revealed everything in detail, such as the date and the place where he met Kirsten at the cafe, and that he was just a paid actor. Just like Lewis, who acted as his investor. Daniels was not actually Lewis's secretary because he was a Gore's person. Robinson was very shocked and immediately locked up Daniels. He felt very guilty, especially since Blackie and Peter had died in vain. Robinson couldn't help but tell the whole crew and they immediately became emotional and wanted to kill Daniela, but Robinson managed to calm them down by saying that killing Daniels was useless because it wouldn't change anything. Robinson didn't want to be caught and let all his efforts be in vain, so he decided to take the submarine to the Turkish Sea, where the Russian patrol or Agora would not dare to intervene. This was of course very risky because Morozov knew that the trip would be very dangerous, as they would cross the shallow and rocky seabed, but knowing there was no other option, they all agreed. They first attached the steering shaft while the rest calculated the gold. Daniels was again called to help Fraser, but it was a mistake, because after meeting Fraser, Daniels incited him to kill Zaitsev. After the preparations were complete, the submarine was turned on again and the Zaitsev was tasked to handle the stability of the shaft. At first, the steering shaft caught fire and shook the entire submarine, but Robinson managed to stabilize the submarine at a depth of 60 meters. They sailed calmly without any problems until Baba detected a large crag, Robinson immediately told them to stop. All the crew worked together, and fortunately, the ship was able to stop before hitting it. They apparently entered the shallow area, and there were only two options, whether to turn around or enter a gap that was less than 100 meters wide, but they might arrive within an hour. Robinson chose to go through the gap because he was sure that Baba could guide them to avoid the rocks. Fraser was disappointed with this decision because Robinson had neglected the safety of his crews. Robinson didn't care about Fraser's opinion and immediately ordered the entire crew to return to their respective posts. Daniels continued to persuade Fraser to kill Zaitsev. Initially, Fraser refused, but after experiencing problems while trying to cross the gap, he changed his mind. He agreed with Daniels that they needed to go to the surface instead of forcing Robinson's crazy idea, so he called Zaitsev, saying that he needed help, but then he hit him on the head with a wrench to death. After that, Fraser followed Daniels to report Zaitsev's death. They said that Zaitsev had died because he was hit, but people didn't believe it because they saw bloodstains on Fraser's face and clothes. Daniels kept asking Robinson to raise the submarine to the surface, and that was when something bad happened. Fraser was wondering why they kept increasing the speed but hadn't reached a seabed. Turned out they were falling into a trench, which meant the submarine would receive more pressure from the outside. Everyone including Robinson went to the engine room because they heard there was a leak, but when they stopped the leak, another bigger hole opened and the pressurized water immediately hit Tobin, making him faint. Robinson and Morozov immediately took Tobin away from there while the others tried to close the leak in the engine room. Unfortunately, the leak kept appearing and overwhelmed them. Dana saw that there was no chance of surviving, so he chose to leave them and close the engine room, leaving the rest of the crew. They couldn't do anything but wait for the water to fill the room and drown them. Not long after, one of the lights short-circuited and an explosion occurred. Daniels saw that the door could no longer hold the water so he ran to another door and then closed it. Unexpectedly, his belt got stuck. He asked Morozov for help but he refused to help because he knew what Daniels was doing to his friends in the engine room. Only Robinson, Morozov, and Tobin were left. Knowing his entire crew had died, Robinson took out the life jacket he had kept and coincidentally there were only three of them. Morozov was furious to find out that his own captain had hidden the life jacket. He also felt guilty towards his friends who were drowning below while he was able to survive, but there was no time left to think. Morozov and Tobin put on the life jackets while Robinson would later follow via the emergency route after depressurizing the submarine. Tobin intended to take a gold bar but Robinson forbade it because it could interfere with the function of the jacket. The two of them immediately went through the exit hole of the submarine and Robinson launched them to the surface. Once they made it to the surface, Tobin was very happy because he could see the sun again, but when Morozov caught up with him, he asked him to wait for Robinson. Unfortunately, Morozov knew that Robinson had lied to them. There was no emergency route in the submarine which meant Robinson chose to sink with the ship. Tobin couldn't believe it, especially after another life jacket floated near them. Tobin thought it was Robinson, but it turned out to be all the gold bars and a photo of the Robinson family. 